Welcome to today's Half and Half class. In this class, all you're going to need is a resistance band, a sturdy chair to sit, to sit on, and an open space to stand in. With the open space, let's make sure the open space you're going to stand, stand up in is trip hazard free, but make sure there's something close to hand you can use to help with your balance if you need it. Let's make sure the chair that you're sat on is sturdy. If it has got wheels, let's make sure brakes are applied and wheels are facing forward for a good level of stability. And let's have a look at this resistance band. So when using resistance bands, it's really important to check before we start exercising, there's no holes, rips or tears within the band. If there's any form of damage to the band, we cannot use it. So go along, do your checks now, make sure your bands are suitable for use. Once you're happy with that, get yourself moving. So start moving yourself in any direction you want to do. Start getting all of those joints warmed up. We know that in a warm up, it's all about mobilizing and warming up through the joints. So we're going to move our hips, our legs, our knees, our toes, our back, all of the vertebrae in our spine, and we're going to just make some silly shapes. We're on those inflatables at the car salesman shop to get your attention. Ooh, yes, that's right. Perfect, perfect, perfect. But when you're ready, let's just start doing this. We're going to the bicep up here. So we're going to get our elbows and shoulders nicely warmed up in a very specific manner to what we're doing in today's class. Nice and controlled movements. So we're just going up and down, nice and straight. So in this class, at any point, if we go, when we go overhead, if doing it with resistance is too much hard work, take resistance away and give yourself a hand. I'd much rather you have a greater range of motion without resistance than a poor range with resistance. Let's now give me the nice round of applause that you all know I actively crave. Nice big circles and a round of applause. Fantastic. Nice movements. Keep that going. Well done. So we're now just going to start punching forwards and backwards. Nice, slow movements. So we're not punching, we're not doing no cardiovascular work today, but we do really want to get some good rotation in that spine. We want to get those shoulder blades moving forwards and backwards, up and down, reaching as far as you can and pulling back as far as you can. Reaching and pulling as far as you can. Nice. Reaching and pulling. Reaching and good. Perfect. So now just some nice big backward shoulder rolls. Big backward shoulder rolls. Well done. So we want to have a little party of our feet now. So we're going to have a little bit of a party of our feet. Moving these feet in any direction you can. Going up and down, in and out. Doing some, there's no place like home, doing whatever you can do, get those ankles moving. They go left to right, up, down, and around in circles. They do every action. So we're really trying to work through having a bit of a party and warming them up. And doing what you can do for you today. I don't mind how much or how little you move your feet, as long as you're doing the best that you can do for you today. Good, just keep doing that nice movements. Working through those toes, getting those toes working, ankles going in and out, and becoming Dorothy from um, The Wizard of Oz, that's it. I need to look what film that was then. Good, and when you're ready, we're just going to do some slow kick outs, but just heel touching the floor. I fully understand for some people this here is a mammoth task, and that's completely fine. Just because I can do it like this doesn't mean you need to. All you need to do is the best that you can do for you today. So if that is just here, that's amazing. Doing what you can do today. 
What we want to do is we want to get our leg as straight as we can and activate and squeeze through these thigh muscles. So these quadricep muscles, we're straightening the legs and squeeze and send in activation down there. Well done. Nice work. Kick it out. Well done. So when you are ready, just start either walking on the spot or doing your wheelchair pushing going forwards and backwards, keeping yourself moving. I'm going to show you the four first four exercises we're doing three times. We're doing three times because we learn the exercise, we practice the exercise, then we become masters at the exercise. So the first one we're going to do is going to be with our resistance band. We're going to put the resistance band behind our back. So it's resting over our shoulder blades. So if you want to start doing that while you're moving, that's completely fine. And then what we're doing is we're going to do a chest press. So we're working the muscles on the front of our body and we are going to go here out nice and straight. So you can go one at a time. You can do both at the same time. It's completely up to you. How we make this harder is we make the tension of our resistance band shorter. How we make it easier, you make the tension and the resistance band a bit longer. If doing this with, with the resistance band is too much, take the resistance band away and we're just going in and out. If we're just here, that's fine. If we're here, that's fine as well. Doing the best that you can do for you today. So, for people who have got limbs who don't want to be fully active doing this, it's completely fine. No resistance band, hold them onto your hands and we're just going in and out as high as we can go. If we're here, amazing. If we're down here, amazing. But what's the most important thing is that we're going to get our arm from bent to straight, pushing out, working the triceps and the chest. That is the first exercise. And then, so we've done this, and then what we do is we're going to have our arms on our chest here, and I'm pushing out nice and straight, and coming back in, pushing out. So I'm pushing out directly to the side with resistance band. We can make this easy by making the resistance band shorter. We can make it harder by making the resistance band longer. Once again, if you can't do it with resistance band, do it about, or it's just about getting that elbow out if you can, working through those deltoid shoulder muscles. Then we're going to bring the resistance band around the front. We're going to hold on to the resistance band quite close together. And we're going to have both arms out here. And we're going to do our bow and arrow. So arms both start here. Then we pull in towards us. Pulling in. Pulling in. And then once again, the resistance is completely fine. And then we're going to be here. Arms down here. Hold the resistance band. I'm going up overhead alternating arms. If we are resistance bands too much, do it out or just help your hands if you need to. Everybody good with that, feeling strong. Perfect. So resistance bands should hopefully be around your shoulder blades by now. You've got all of your resistance bands, so it's the correct level of resistance for you and your knees. One thing very adjustable. Take your time. We have got five seconds until we're going to go into our chest press. So like I said, you can do single arm or double arm. We're going to go in three, two, one, off we go. So we're pushing out nice and straight. You can do both at the same time or one at a time. It's completely up to you. But we're going to try and bring our arms as straight as we can. In and out. We're working those triceps, so the muscles on the backs of our arms, and our pectoral muscles, so our muscles on our chest. And forwards and backwards, perfect. We have got 25 seconds to go, and then we're gonna go into that push, that lateral push, we're pushing directly out to the side. Keep it on going. Are we doing one at a time, or both? What's best for you? We are 10 seconds to go until we're doing that lateral push. Well done, so keep that going, nice and controlled. Three, 
two, one. So hands stay on breastbone. I'm pushing out to the side. I'm coming back in, back on breastbone, pushing out to the side. So I'm working my triceps really hard today in today's session. Two triceps, so it's back to back. Keeping them going. In. Perfect. Keep that going. If it's too easy, make the resistance tougher. Make it harder. This shouldn't be easy for anybody. Work to your level, do what you can do. We've got 20 seconds to go and then we're going to bring the resistance bands around in front of us. We're going to do the bow and arrow. And so we're simulating drawing that arrow back with our bow in 10 seconds time. Going out to the side, back in. In three, two, one. So bring it in front. Make the resistance as short as you can, that you can which is right for you. Arms start out in front. Drawing back to your ear, and then slowly bring it back and drawing back. So when we do this, we're squeezing shoulder blades together. So I feel resistance already from here. So it's resistance all the way, squeezing shoulder blades together. Perfect. Keep going with this. This is how it is. Perfect. Nice, strong movement. Squeezing back. Squeezing back. We've got 20 seconds to go until we're going to bring our hands down to our laps and we're going to do that overhead press. Give it 10 seconds to go. Nice, slow control. Drawing those shoulder blades back. We've got five seconds. Four, three, two, one. Bring my arm down to my lap and I'm going above my head, slowly down. Above my head, slowly down. So remember, if you can't go above your head and fully straighten that arm with the resistance band, take the resistance band away, I'd much rather you get a straight arm above your head without resistance than not very straight with resistance. Good. So keep going out. We've got 30 seconds to go and then we're having a rest. So going up. Good. Perfect. So if you need to give a hand, Bit of support is completely fine, so you can go good hand, supported hand. If you want it, work those arms. That's perfect. So we've got 10 seconds to go, and then we're into that breath. Good. Five, four, three, two, one. Good. Down and rest. Shake those arms out. How was that? Easy, hard, or okay. Oh, everyone said it was okay but hard. Okay, good. So now I've found it easy. If it was too hard, adjust your resistance band or take the resistance band away as long as you're able to do it. So we find that equally, if it's hard because of strength, amazing. We want to work those arms nice and hard. So we've got 30 seconds left. So get that resistance band back around your shoulder blades. So it's resting over your shoulder blades. We're going to go back into that chest press in 20 seconds time. So you've got 20 seconds to get behind your shoulder blades. Choose the appropriate level of resistance that you're going to use with your resistance band. We're going to go in 10 seconds time. So keep yourself ready. Shoulders back. We're having those arms nice and straight. We're going to go in four, three, two, one. And we're pushing out nice and straight, straight arms. Straight is great. So have the resistance band, make sure it's around your shoulders, not around your neck. So if the resistance band around your neck, take it out from your neck, bring it down so it's over your shoulder blades, push it out and in. Nice and controlled. Slow and steady wins the race when it comes to these exercises. We're not rushing them. We're doing things slow, controlled and deliberate. We've got 30 seconds to go. And then we're going to go into that lateral push, the push is directly out to the side. Good, keep going. 20 seconds to go. Nice, slow control. If you do it without resistance, that's completely great. I'd rather you have that fuller range of motion without resistance than half the range with resistance. We've got five, four, three, 
two, one, and we're going directly out to the side. Off we go. Well done. Nice, strong. Well done. Perfect. That's it. So we're just doing one at a time. But equally, if you want to do both at the same time, like some people are doing, that's amazing. I don't mind that at all. That's actually really great if you want to do both at the same time. But this is also fantastic. Good. So keep going nice and controlled. Adjust the resistance bands to what your level and your specifications are. If we're not using resistance, that's completely fine. Work to your limit. We've got 10 seconds to go until we're going to do that bow and arrow. So we'll bring a resistance band out in front in three, two, one. So off we go to in front of you. I've got a nice short resistance here. I'm in front. I'm pulling back to my head, to my ear. Slowly releasing back. Good. We are Robin Hood. Robin Hood. Riding through the glen. Robin Hood, Robin Hood, with merry men. Record, we're recording this because well, so I'm recording my singing for YouTube. Lucky people, you lot. Very lucky people. And a few people laugh at me. I don't mind. I don't mind. We've got 20 seconds to go. And then we're going to bring the resistance bands down to our waist. And we're going to go one single arm above our head. Keep going. Last five seconds. Four, three, two, one. So I'm here. I'm going up. And I'm pushing up nice and tall. Nice and tall. This is perfect. Well done. If we're doing this without resistance bands, amazing still. The most important thing is getting that good range of motion. So make sure we're able to fully straighten that arm if we're using resistance bands. If we can't, either make the resistance a little bit less tall or take the resistance band away. Because getting that range of motion is the most important thing. Well done. Keep going. Nice and controlled. All the way up and down. So we've got 15 seconds to go and then you've got another rest. Good. Well done. So really taking your time. Going up nice and, nice and tall. Really getting your arm nice and straight. Perfect. Well done. Three, two, one. Down we go, shake those arms out, have a rest, have a drink. Remember, hydration is key. Was that easy, hard, or okay? Compared to the first one, easier than the first set, harder, or about the same. Some find it easier because they're getting that activation. Okay, good. So we've got 30 seconds left for our rest. So it's our last time doing chest press. So we're going to make sure this is. Behind our back, running over, over our shoulders. We've got 20 seconds to go. So, behind our shoulder blades, nowhere near my neck. I've got 10 seconds to go. So get yourself ready, sitting up nice and straight, have a quick drink if you need to. We're gonna go in five, four, three, two, one. Off we go. So we press them out with both hands. Or are we doing a single arm press? I don't mind what you do, as long as you're doing it to the best of your ability and you're trying to get your arm to go as straight as possible. If you can't fully straighten your arm with the resistance band, take the resistance band away. There is absolutely no shame in that. Getting a better range of motion is the most important thing. Good, so keep going with this nice and strong. Slow and steady, slow, controlled and deliberate. I said it before and I'll say it again. We're not in control of a lot of things during this pandemic, but we are in control of the movements that we create. So make sure they're done. Slow, controlled and deliberate to get the full activation of the muscle. We have got five seconds to go until going out to the side in three, 
two, one, so we're pushing straight out to the side, straight out to the side, or if you want, like some people already doing, straight out the side with both arms, coming back into the body, straight out with both arms. I don't mind which one you do, as long as you're doing your best to keep your arms at shoulder height and going directly out to the side. So three and nine o'clock on the clock face. Straighten those arms. With or without resistance, I'm not too worried. As long as you're doing the best you can to interpret what I'm doing to your level of ability. We have got 15 seconds to go until we're going to our final bow and arrow. I won't sing for you this time. Good, so just keep that going. Nice and controlled. Three, two, one. Off we go. So bring it round. Resistance is quite short. I'm here and I'm pulling through. Squeezing shoulder blades together. Squeezing shoulder blades back. Squeezing them back. Nice and controlled. Taking our turn, squeezing them back. Well done. Squeezing them back. Well done. We have got 20 seconds to go until we're going to bring our hands down to our lap and we're doing our final set of overhead presses either using or not using resistance bands but making sure we've got that full range or as full a range as we can get in our arms and shoulders. We've got three, two, one, hands on your legs and we're bringing one arm up, straight arm slowly down. If you can't straighten the arm back resistance, if you can't straighten the arm with resistance bands, take those resistance bands away, do it just against gravity if we find it hard to get our arms straight against gravity, help yourself out. Use your other arms to get it nice and straight or as straight as you can do for you today. Perfect. We have got 30 seconds to go and then we're resting. Perfect. Taking your time. Last 10 seconds to go. So really concentrate a nice high and straight. Three, two, one. Down and rest. Good. So just keep yourself moving nice and slow. How did we find that? Easy, hard, or okay. Ooh, okay, so <laughs> some of you in that okay but hardish. That's good. It's a good place to be. So well done to all of you. So Next four exercises we're doing three times are going to be resistance band free, so you can put your resistance band down. So the first exercise we're going to do is a bum shuffle. So we know how to do this, we know how to be very much like John Barrowman, over exaggerate things and be fabulous. As I say, so I really want to lift that bum as high as you can, get good rotation working for those feet, the legs, the hips the belly, the back, working, everything this does. If we can't shuffle forwards and backwards, I want to lean side to side, lifting bum off the chair, being in control, going down nice and slow. So there are the options for that. And then we're going to work on the lower legs and there's no place like home, so our feet are going to go in and out. So I don't mind if we do one foot and then the other foot, but what I want is your heels and feet to be going in and out. I don't mind if you do one foot at a time. I don't mind how little or how much movement you get in your foot as long as you try as hard as you can try for you today to get that activation, please. We're then going to do a heel tap quadricep activation. So we're going to go out, tap heel, in. Tap heel and in. When we go out, tap and heels, we're squeezing our thigh muscles, trying to send and activate these muscles. In and out. In and out. 
and then we're going to walk ourselves to the edge of our chair, hands on the chair, digging those heels in, leaning forwards, and we sit to stand. If you can't sit to stand, you are just to lean forward and you're going to try and bum as high off the chair as you safely can. Going up and down. Sit to stand's easy. We're just going to go into squats. If squats are easy, we're going to add weight and go into a weight squat. If that's easy, we're going to slow our squats right down. So there is a million and one alternative options to make this harder or easier for you. And you should all know what works for you. How do we find that? Are we ready to go? Perfect. So we're going to start our bum shuffles in three, two, one. Off we go. Nice, big bum shuffles. I want you being extravagant and fabulous, as they say, in the campus where you can be. Nice and fabulous. Really going, making them big movements. Well done. If we find that quite hard, we're just going up and down, control, lifting, left bum off, right bum off, well done, keep going, left bum off, right bum off, or going forward and backwards, really working hard, pushing through those feet, working those calves hard, lifting those heels off the floor, helping you through, we got 10 seconds to go until we're going to go into our no place at home, so next time you at the front of your chair, Stay at the front of your chair, get your balance, off we go, no place like home. So I've stopped at the front of my chair, so I've got most of my legs and nice and free, and I'm here now, I'm now doing my toes are going in and out, I'm doing my no place like home, toes are working, am I doing one foot at a time? How much movement can you create? What's working for you? Are you doing one foot at a time? Are you doing toe, 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 heel, 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 heel? What's working? How much can you get? How much activation and movement can you get through these feet? We have 20 seconds to go. So keep on going through that. And then we're going to go into those heel taps with our quadricep activation. So we're bringing these toes in and out. Nice work. Keeping on going. So now when you're ready, walking your feet back to shoulder apart. Once they're shoulder apart, off we go. We're going to go out, tap our foot, activate these quads, bring it back in. So we're going out, I'm activating, bring it back in. I'm just tapping my heel. I don't mind if we're just here or we're here, doing the best that you can do to interpret the movement, getting that leg as straight as you can. If you're having to help your leg go in and out, that's completely fine. As long as the leg that you're helping is doing 100% of what it can do and your arms are just assisting with the final bit of the movement. We have got 15 seconds to go until we're going to sit to stand to start thinking about what's the best option for sit to stand for you. Are we squatting? Are we sitting and standing without hands? Are we using with hands? Are we lifting bum off the chair? We're going to do in three, two, one. So get your legs at 90, hands on chair, leaning forwards. Sit to stand if you can. If you can squat, we're doing squats. If we're having to use our hands to get up and down, it's completely fine. Bum back, going down nice and slow. Or are we having to Lean forwards, bum up and down. What are we doing? What works for you? Nice, slow and controlled. 20 seconds to go and then you're having a rest. Well done, keep this going. We just lift the bum up and lean forward, getting that bum as high as we can. Three, two, one. So sit yourself down. Move yourself back. So you're leaning against the backrest of your chair and rest. How did we find that? 
Easy. Hard. Or okay. Okay, some found it hard. So for everyone who found it hard, what did we find hard? How can you adapt that to make it? Or even though it was hard, was it still doable? Yes, okay, so we're in a good place then. Hard but doable is always a good place to be. So I'm very happy with that. Rest in those legs. We've got 20 seconds left to go, so we're gonna start by our bum shuffles very shortly. So get your last bit of water inside if you're having a quick drink of water. And we're gonna go in 10 seconds time. So get yourself ready in your chair with bum shuffling being extravagant and fabulous in three, two, one, off we go. Let's start these bum shuffles, off we go. Nice and controlled, but really over-exaggerated movements. So we're getting those heels, our the toes are working really hard. Well done, keep this going. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Well done, are we moving forward and backwards or are we just going from side to side? What's best? What works? Keep on going. Good movement, good movement. We've got less than 20 seconds to go until we're going to do our no place like home. So our feet in and out, our little feet dance. 10 seconds, keep this going, well done. Well done, well done, well done. So when you go to the front of your chair next time, stay there. When you're in the front of your chair, get your feet at 90 degrees and off we go. Start doing this, no, uh, no place like home. So our feet, heels are coming together and away. Toes together and away. What are we doing, how are we doing? Are we doing one at a time? Are we doing both at the same time? Are we lifting heels up, toes up? What are we doing? What can you do for you today? It doesn't matter if one foot is going amazing and the other foot is doing just a little bit. As long as you're trying your hardest on both feet, we don't mind. The best, the more you can do, the better. The more you try to do, the better. The more activation you can send, just keep going. How we find this compared to the first round, a bit easier, a bit harder, no change. The more activation you send. Okay, so we've got less than 10 seconds to go until we go into our heel, heel taps with our quads activation. In three, two, one, off we go. So we're tapping those heels out, sending signals, getting these legs nice and straight, as straight as you can get them. Tapping those quads and squeezing, tapping the heels and squeezing the quadriceps, your thigh muscles. Squeeze those side muscles as tight as you can. Nice and controlled. Good, keep squeezing through. 30 seconds to go. Doing the best that you can do for you today. Remember, if you haven't used your, your hands and your arms to help, that's completely fine, but making sure that your leg that you're helping is doing 100% of what it can do. Good, last 15 seconds to go. And then we're gonna do our sit to stand. Perfect, keep this up. Last five seconds, four, three, two, one. So keep this out to the edge of your chair, hands on chair, leaning forwards when you're ready. Off we go, nice and controlled. Standing up, squeezing bum, pushing hips forwards. Leaning forward, slowly coming down. Going up, squeeze the bum, push your hips forwards, slowly going down. Well done, keep that up. Keep going, well done. We have got 20 seconds to go and then you're into a rest. Keep going, well done. Perfect. Last five, so next time you sat down, stay sat down, move yourself. So you're leaning against the back crest of your chair and how did we find that? Easy, hard, or okay. Okay, so, 
compared to the first round, was that easier or harder? Easier. Did we get more or less activation, especially doing our no place like home? How would we find out? Did we get more or less or about the same? Some get a little bit less, some got more. Okay, good. So, we're working really hard. We'll see how we are in this last round. So, we've got one more round of this to go. We've got one more round in us. Yes, well done to all of you. So, 15 seconds left, and we're going to those bum shuffles. So, make them as extravagant as you can. We're going to do our bum shuffles in five, four, three, two, one, off we go. So nice, big bum shuffles. How extravagant can you make it? I really want to see you going over the top. We've learned the exercise, we've practiced. This is the round where we master the exercise so we can be as extravagant as we want. For those of you who are just doing a bum, bum lift from side to side, that's amazing. But can we slightly move forwards and backwards now? Now we're mastering the exercise. What can we do? Really going over the top with this, being extravagant. Yes, as some people see, some people have been absolutely amazing with this. Really going over the top, which is what we want. Nice, big movements. 15 seconds to go until we're going to do our no place like home. And keep it on going. So next time you get to the front of your chair, stay there. Get your feet at 90 degrees, feet at yeah, your knees at 90 degrees, and start your, there's no place like home. So heels together, in and out. Get those toes working in and out as well. Working really hard for these calf muscles, the muscle at the bottom of our leg. Raising that heel up as we're moving it in and out. Are we doing one foot at a time? Are we doing both at the same time? Did we start the first set just using one foot, and now we can do both? How much activation are we getting now, I wonder? What are you doing? Doesn't matter how much or how little you can do, as long as you're doing the best for you today, working really hard, activating, getting these legs, rotating, going in and out. We've got 15 seconds to go, and then we're going to do our last set of heel taps, and looking for as much quadricep activation as possible, so activating these muscles on our thighs, in five seconds time, we get the legs as straight as possible. Three, two, one. So tap in heel out, activating through this quadricep muscle. Heel out, activating. Good. Working these hamstrings as well, bringing our heels in. We're working through these hamstrings, so the muscle at the back of our leg. We're working these hard as well. This is good, well done, nice work. If you find this easy, can you just drag your foot back in, work those hamstrings hard, drag your foot out, drag it back in. I don't know what works for you, what can you do to make it hard? Perfect. We have 20 seconds to go, and then we're going to our last round of sit to stand. We're going to keep going. Perfect. Well, I'm saying so good. So we're going to go to our last round of sit to stand now. We're doing this with weights, without weights, with hands, without hands, in three, two, one, off we go. So heel, heels and knees at 90, leaning forwards, up we go. Down, perfect, nice and controlled, taking your time. If this is easy, are you just doing squats? If that's easy, are you doing squats with weights? Yes, so I see now people who are just doing this to start off with and now doing this. This is amazing. Keep doing what you're doing. Nice and slow. But when you're going down, I don't want to see you falling down. I want you going down nice and controlled. So going up, controlled. Going down, controlled. Nice, controlled movements. Well done. 15 seconds to go and then you're resting. Well done. So next time we sat down, stay sat down, move yourself back in your chair to so lean against the back wrist of your chair. How did we find that? Easy, hard, or okay. 
Okay, let's go back to the first round and compare to the last round. Easier or harder in the last round? More or less activation in the last round than the first round? Or about the same? Some are saying less and we're getting tired, some are saying more, some are saying... Okay, so there's a massive, massively mixed bag, as always, which is brilliant. But did everybody achieve? Yes, everybody achieved. Well done to all of you. So, we are taking a really big breath in. And out. Big breath in. And out. A big breath in. So, what I want you to do is to move yourself over to the left hand side of your chair, if possible. So you've got as much of your left leg hanging free as possible. I'm now going to ask you, if you can, to try and place your left leg behind the chair as far as you can bring it. What is this crazy exercise, Joe? I haven't done this before, I've not done this in a long time. So we're going to start teaching how to stretch through these thigh muscles here. So we're all here. So what I want you to do is I want you to push your knee down to the floor. I want you to lean back and then lean away from this leg. Lift your arm up and stretch. So we're here. I'm leaning back and leaning away. I'm pushing my knee down, stretching, pushing my hip forward, and I'll feel this stretch running down my thigh muscle. So leaning back and stretching to the best of my ability. If I can't lift my arm up, no worries. Lift your shoulder up, just try and create distance between your shoulder and knee, pushing that hip forward, stretching through this thigh muscle. Can you feel this? Good, 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 good. Perfect. In your own time, bring yourself down, back up to centre, bringing this hip forward, knee forward, back. Walk yourself back, walk yourself to the other side of the chair, and we're going to repeat that. So I'm bringing my left leg as far behind me as I can. I'm pushing my knee down, I'm pushing my hip forward, I'm leaning back to the side, and I'm stretching. I'm really pushing my hip forward. That's going to be the key thing now, is pushing that knee down and the hip forward, and stretching through. Well done. Keep that going. Nice stretching. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Big breaths in. And uh, so as you all know by now, stretching, we never stretch into pain, just into a discomfort that we can tolerate. But don't be being in pain, though, just stretching where you can. Taking a big breath in. When you breathe out, bring that arm back, seat yourself up straight, bring this leg back to neutral, keep yourself back into the centre of your chair. When you are ready, walk yourself forwards in your chair, so as much of your leg is free as possible. I'm going to now, I'm going to bring my left leg out nice and straight. My heel and toes are remaining on the floor. My leg is straight. Both my hands are placed on my right leg, which is bent. I'm now taking a big breath in. As I breathe out, I'm going down towards my left leg, which is straight, my heels and toes on the floor. And I'm down to the level of discomfort that I can tolerate. Once again, I'm not stretching into pain, just into the discomfort level that I can tolerate. As I hold this stretch, this discomfort level will start to ease. When that happens, I'm going to take a big breath in, breathe out, I'm going to drop a bit deeper into it and bring that stretch and discomfort back up. But the deeper I go into it, the more I feel this going down towards my calf and up into the belly of my hamstring and we're holding this stretch. Nice big breaths in and out. 
We're now going to take a really big breath in. On that inhaling breath, we're coming up and off the stretch. And we're bringing this leg back to 90. I'm now going to bring my right leg out nice and straight. Heels and toes remain on the floor. Both my hands are going to be placed on my left leg, which is now my bent leg. I'm taking a big breath in. As I breathe out, I'm dropping down into that stretch and going as low as I can go, so I'm at this comfort level that I can tolerate. And I'm going to hold this here. Nice big breaths in and out. So once again, I'm not stretching into pain. I'm just at this comfort level that I can tolerate. Nice big breaths in and out. I can feel my discomfort level starting to ease, so I'm big breath in. Breathing out and I'm dropping a bit deeper into that stretch and feel my discomfort come back up again. And that's as deep as I can go for now. So I'm going to take a really big breath in on that inhalation of breath. I'm coming up and off that stretch. And I'm bringing my knee back to 90. I'm going to walk myself back. So I'm leaning against the backrest of my chair. I'm going to bring my hands in front. I'm coming a big circle wide and I'm moving my elbows behind my back. So I'm trying to pinch my elbows behind my back and I'm squeezing my shoulders together. My hands are going behind my back so I can really feel a nice stretch in the upper part of my chest. And we're holding this here. Pushing chest forward, squeezing shoulders and elbows together behind the back. Really stretching through that chest. Big breaths in and out. Big breaths in and out. Keeping that there. Really big breath in. As we breathe out, we're going to relax our arms, put them onto our legs, and we're going to roll those shoulders nice, big, Backwards shoulder rolls, stretching through. Brilliant. When you're ready, you're going to bring your right arm across your chest towards your left hand shoulder. Your left arm's going to go underneath your right arm. It's going to finish above the elbow. You're now going to reinforce your right arm close to your chest so I can feel the stretch in my right hand shoulder blade. I'm now forcing my right shoulder blade away from my spine. So I now feel this stretch in the upper right hand part of my back and shoulder. Nice big breaths in and out. Big breaths in and out. As this discomfort level starts to ease, I'm going to force my arm closer to my chest, my shoulder further away from my spine to bring that discomfort level back up. What a nice big breath. We're taking a really big breath in. As we breathe out, I'm dropping this arm down. I'm bringing my left over my right, my right arm under my left arm. It's going to finish above my elbow. And I'm going to reinforce my left arm as close to my chest as I can bring it. I'm forcing my left shoulder blade away from my spine. So now feel the stretch in the upper left hand part of my back and shoulder. Nice big breath in. And out. Big breaths in and out. So I can feel this comfort already starting to ease. So I'm forcing my arm closer to my chest, my shoulder blade further away from my spine, and there we are, back up to this comfort level that I can sort of But I'm now taking a really big breath in. As I breathe out, I'm dropping this arm down to my side and I'm doing a couple more shoulder rolls. I'm going to take a really big breath in, stretching that back and belly and breathing out. Big breath in and out. One more really big breath in. Well done today, you all did amazing today's half and half class. 
get yourselves in the water, rehydrate, stretch where you feel these stretches. If you're not, you feel the place that needs to be worked out. Well done today, and I hope to see you in some class sometime soon.